That's the way authoritarian regimes fall. First gradually, and then suddenly. The Shah's mistake was to want to do too much too fast. In October 1971, a spectacle unlike any the world had seen unfolded in Iran. Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the last monarch of the 2,500-year-old Persian Empire, stood at the helm of a celebration meant to bridge the glorious past of his ancestors with the bright modern future he envisioned for Iran. This was the 2,500-year anniversary of the Persian Empire, a grand statement of cultural pride, power and prestige meticulously planned over years and carried out with uncompromising extravagance. For the Shah, this was more than a commemoration. It was his legacy. He viewed himself as a descendant of ancient Persian kings, a modern Cyrus the Great or Darius the Fem, destined to restore Iran to the greatness it once commanded on the world stage. Persepolis, the ceremonial capital of the Achaemenid Empire, was chosen as the site a place that for centuries had lain quiet, undisturbed in the desert. Now it was awakened for an event that would go down in history for its splendour and for its consequences. Months of careful planning transformed Persepolis into a royal city once again. Architects, artisans and even botanists from across the world descended on Iran to bring the Shah's vision to life. In the heart of this ancient city, rose what was called the Tent City. These were no ordinary tents. They were luxury pavilions designed by French architects and decorated with hand-selected imported items. Every detail, from the carpets underfoot to the crystal chandeliers overhead, was chosen to dazzle, to astonish, and to honor Persia's imperial past. The celebration was not just an event, it was a feast of the senses. To impress the international guests, the Shah spared no expense. Top chefs from Maxim's in Paris were flown in, bringing with them a menu that bordered on the surreal. Peacocks stuffed with foie gras, the finest beluga caviar, and wines aged longer than most of the guests had been alive. The elaborate dinners and the atmosphere of the evening were meant to remind the world that Iran was not just a country. It was a continuation of an empire that had once changed the course of history. The guest list was a testament to the Shah's ambition. Dignitaries, royals and heads of state from 69 nations travelled to Persepolis. They arrived by plane and motorcade, greeted by the elites of Iranian society, all dressed in luxurious evening gowns and black tie attire. Here were some of the most powerful people in the world, from Prince Philip of the United Kingdom to Ethiopia's Emperor Haile Selassie all gathered to honour Iran's ancient legacy under the Shah's watchful eye. It was a gathering of the world, meant to symbolise Iran's return to greatness. The event went on for three unforgettable days, as guests dined, danced and revelled under the stars in this oasis of luxury, surrounded by the remains of ancient Persian civilization. But beneath the veneer of elegance and sophistication, there was unease. Many viewed this lavish display as a wasteful, almost obscene show of wealth, especially given Iran's deepening social and economic problems. The Shah's vision of a modern Iran was starkly at odds with the reality many Iranians face daily, poverty, repression, and a sense of growing unrest. The staggering cost of the celebration, estimated at $100 million, did not go unnoticed. While the Shah and his foreign guests enjoyed the finest luxuries, much of Iran was struggling. Critics at home and abroad began to question the wisdom of such spending. Some saw it as the Shah's desperate attempt to cement his power and distract from domestic issues. To others, the celebration became symbolic of a monarchy increasingly out of touch with its people. This celebration would ultimately become part of the Shah's undoing. Less than a decade later, the Iranian revolution would topple the monarchy and the Shah would be forced into exile, dying a lonely death far from the empire he once ruled. For many Iranians, the 2,500-year celebration had marked the beginning of the end, a reminder of the Shah's excesses 
and of a ruling elite oblivious to the needs and struggles of its people. Persepolis remains, silent and enduring, as it has for centuries. Its ruins stand as both a tribute to an ancient civilization and a witness to Iran's turbulent history. For the Shah, this celebration was to be a crowning achievement, a mark of his place in history. But history, as it often does, had other plans. The 2,500-year celebration has become a symbol of grandeur. Yes, but also of the perils of unchecked ambition, of power detached from its roots. The legacy of the Persian Empire lives on, not only in the ruins of Persepolis, but in the resilience and spirit of the Iranian people. This celebration, a moment in time when past, present and future collided, is a story of empire, revolution and the enduring lesson that history, no matter how grand or glorious, belongs to the people. <laughs>